The Xeon forces were well stocked with machines, owing their status as the enemy forces. While they had many machines for their basic pilots to throw at the Gundam, they also had specialized machines for exemplary troops. Case in point, Shar Aznable piloted the MS-06S Zaku-2 command type. The specially tuned machine was notable for the command horn on its head, and it was upgraded to go three times faster than a normal Zaku. This is one of the ways that Xeon marked out its ace pilots with special kit, though others like Rambaral were rewarded with their own specialized mobile suits. One other notable case was the machine used by Makuve, his specialized gun. It took everything that had been learned from the Guf and took it to the next level. The Gyan featured a shield full of missiles and mines to trap and harass its opponent. It also carried a beam sword. But while it was technically the first to show up with this sort of kit, the Gelgug was more notable in the grand scheme of things. The Gyan would sadly not make it into the compilation films, being replaced with an extended duel with Shar's Gelgug. Another way the Xeon tried to get the edge over their enemies was with a much more powerful unit called Mobile Armor. These were usually kitted out with heavier weaponry like beam cannons and nasty specialized CQC weapons. To call them specialized is an overstatement, as they rarely went into mass production. The first one of note was the Adzam used by Makuve back on Earth. Later models like the Zaccarello and the Big Row would make appearances, but ultimately would be easily destroyed by the Gundam. The program didn't last too much further beyond the destruction of the Big Zam for the Xeon, and while the machine would have been extremely useful for cracking open fortresses, it was less effective at defending them. In the same vein, the Opsilus, which was something along the lines of an earthbound Big Zam, was used against the Federation forces during the South Asia campaign. During that same campaign, the Federal forces rolled out their new weapon, the RGM-79-G GM colloquially known as the ground-type gem. This unit was unfit for space combat, but was designed with test data gathered during the V project, which made it a surprisingly durable mobile suit for the time. It was much stockier than its space-born cousin, and shared many parts with the other mainline mobile suit of the time, the RX-79G Gundam ground-type. The GM and Gundam ground-types shared a lot of weaponry as well, most notably the 100mm machine gun, 180mm cannon, beam rifle, and bazooka. They also carried the same arm-mounted shield, though the GM was featured with the tower shield the RX-78 carried more often. There were a total of 42 units produced for the Federal Forces, and it was phased out entirely in favor of the space-capable RGM-79 Jim. Like the GM, the Gundam ground type was extremely versatile, capable of land, sea, and limited air combat with a parachute pack. The highly advanced mobile suit was only slightly more heavily armed, with a built-in Vulcan cannon and a multi-launcher. There were a total of 28 ground-type Gundams built, with 20 of them given to the Kojima Battalion in Southeast Asia. This limited production run led to some comical repair jobs, such as the GM head piloted by Karen Joshua, and the EZ-8 Gundam created from scratch for Shiro Almada. The Federal Forces had to make do with what they could get their hands on after all. The EZ-8, for all its peculiarity, was a fine mobile suit, though perhaps not of ace pilot quality, and it proved its worth against the Goof Custom during the tail end of that campaign. The war in space went slightly smoother with the development and deployment of GMs battering the beleaguered Xeon forces under the heel of attrition. Gyms were not the most powerful mobile suit on the market by a long shot, but their relatively low cost and their ability to field beam weaponry made them head and shoulders over the aging Zaku and Dome types. Obsolescence was almost as big of a liability as combat for the Xeon, and it would prove a costly lesson to all fronts. The gym was reliable, easily repaired if it survived combat, and was the perfect swarm mobile suit, paired with the ball. Well, the gym would go on to prove nearly completely obsolete after the conclusion of the One Year War, it would still have its place in history as the basis for nearly all Federal-style mass production mobile suits in the coming years. 
Join us next time where we'll examine the Xeon Aquatic Warfare Division and finally wrap up the timeline of the One Year War. <laughs>